All right, that would give me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have ten double doubles this season. And I'm gonna lock up every offensive player, <laughs> and nobody can tell me shit. <laughs> give me that. Give me that. Uh, I'm at you. Ten, ten double double of this season, and I'm going to stab him with jab. Every offensive player. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last one? The last and nobody one. can tell me shit. And no one can tell me shit. That's tough. That's tough. That's so tough. <laughs> After the camp, my players and I ran up to him and started doing the gritty. <laughs> and he got mad. I'll never forget the face <laughs> of this cheerleader for the rest player. of my life. Have you met the football players? <laughs> They are the worst guys on campus. <laughs> Kids like, yeah, we know blue too, and it's like yelling it out and stuff. You're, 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 you're. So now I'm still be in the hallway, just pounding push-ups, going like, "Great morning, gentlemen." Right. She would have to use the bleep button a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. Yer, we are back. Episode 27 of Teed Up oh, with my good friend, who I have a lot of nicknames for. Uh, his name, his real name is Philip Robracha. I call him Philly, Philly Cheese, Cheese, Old Man, and there, there's many more that I can go with. Talk about Serbia. Uh, you know, I call you the Big Serb. I, I got a lot of names for you. So, uh, Philip, uh, how are we doing today, man? I'm doing well. Um, a little tired after conditioning. That was, oh, that was a grind today. But Not you know, ideal. We got through it, and we did a little extra work after. So It was the core that killed me. Yeah. Oh, dude. The core is like what got me today. Also, it doesn't help that like half of us have groin problems after the hills <laughs> last week. Yes. So like, we're all like banged up in that. The department. hills were easy, though, compared to this. The hills aren't so bad, too. except I just pulled every muscle yeah, in both Same. of my legs. Today so. was tough, bro. Was so for the listeners, we did... Uh, six sets. Okay, so six rounds. We started with the stairs. That, everybody knows the stairs at Carver. If you listen to the show, you know the stairs at Carver. You had to get up the stairs from the bottom in 10, ten, ten seconds. Second. You had to get all the way up to the top in 10 seconds. Then you have to be down down the stairs in 30 seconds. No, six, uh, it was like 30 or 40. I don't think it was a full 60, but something like that. Yeah. Then we went right into lane slides for 20 seconds or 30. for speed. 30. Oh, 30. It was 30, and then the other one or was... Or for speed. speed. Yeah. And then, so we went right into that, and then we went right over, and we did core, which was like a 30-second ab exercise, and then another ab exercise just for a count, which was 10. We just did 10 exercises, or 10 uh, reps. Yeah. And then we did that. So we did all of that six times with about, in between the abs and then running the stairs again, we had about 40, 40 seconds. Yeah. yeah. And so we did that six times. And it was tough. <laughs> it was tough. Yeah, there was guys on the floor at the end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, we can't we can't out them on the pod. But no, we, no, we were no, supposed we to play pickup happen. after that. We were, but that was just not happening. Uh, guys were struggling. Yeah. We had no. Yeah, no, it, was, it was a it was a good one though. It, it was. But still, the hills outside, like the hills behind Carver, that was easier. Mm-hmm. Yes, so we just did. So we ran from the bottom of the hill at Carver, like behind Carver, to the top for six, or we did four sets of that. Four, four sets, sets and then six. one to the stop sign, yeah, which, is like, sets which is like two hundred yards away. Oh, that yeah. one, that one just with breaks in between. Good. But hey, we got we got through two conditioning, yeah, whatever days, and we only got what two left. Yeah, yeah, I think so, we got oh, two hey, left. Half, halfway through, halfway through. <laughs> Do you struggle with it? Conditioning, <laughs> ah, like it's never my favorite. I feel like what's funny is before I came to Iowa, probably yes, yeah. You know, uh, but when I came here, we just play so fast. So I feel like I've been in the best shape in my life. Or, You're probably like running all the yeah, time. Or, or, yeah, like the way we play, just running. Well, you got to run rim to rim. Yeah, that, that that's, that's harder. It. Oh that god, is, it's it, it's not fun at times. But you know, at North Dakota, we just played slow basketball. A give Philip the ball in the post if, <laughs> when he's ready. If he's ready, <laughs> if he's ready. So, so I did not do a lot of running. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, sometimes I struggle with it. But here, I feel like I've been pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to go. I want to talk a little bit about your family first, and oh, like, hold on. Like, before we get there, can can we do this? Philip and I were going to talk. We talked about this before. Um, so I have to leave the pod at some point. We we got to hurry this up a little bit because I have a stats tutor at seven thirty, 
Philip doesn't necessarily agree with my philosophy on stats. You want to enlighten the people oh a little God. bit, Philip? Yeah, so I was, I, was, I was sitting in class. At, no, no, I was not sitting in class. I I'm was not, sitting in class. I'm not, I'm not on Snapchat during class. It was Patrick. <laughs> he posted a story, and it said, I don't get the point of stats. Everything is just 50-50. It either happens <laughs> or, it, or it doesn't. I, I immediately swiped up because I'm in like a similar class, stats class or whatever. And <laughs> I was like, you're going to have a... Really rough time if that's how you approach this class. <laughs> you can't see this. You can't entertain like the shit that he says. That, that is true. Like, but like, I don't know. I feel like he has so many people on his Snapchat that entertain it regardless. So oh, I they just, do. So I just gotta try, try to help my guy out. You know, oh, hey, man. 50 50. They've been saying that for a while. It either happens or it doesn't, man. It either happens or it doesn't. Everything's 50 50. It's, it's, doesn't Everything's work. 50/50. It doesn't work like that. Okay. But we'll, we'll Anyways, move on. We'll move on from moving that. Moving on, moving on quickly from that. <laughs> um, I want to talk about like your family and kind of like your upbringing, like in Serbia, and like what what it's like there. You know, kind of before before you came to the states, training, basketball, daily life involving school. How nuts the coaches are! Taught, yeah, I want, like crazy coach. You said Serbian coaches are like known for being like truly, truly right. insane. Yeah. So I want to hear about like all that. So a lot of people. A lot of people probably don't know who who your dad is. Um, Silver so. Surfer, Silver Surfer. Uh, that was his, yeah, that was that his nickname. Was his, so his get nickname. In, get into that a little bit as so well. So for the viewers that don't know, my dad had a really long career uh, playing basketball. Started off in Serbia, played in Italy where I was born, then moved to Greece, uh, then we moved to the U.S. He was a he, phenomenal player, just for, so everybody yeah. like Euro League, like so he you know, won yeah. two Euro League championships. Uh, one with Partizan Belgrade and when he was like 18. Mm -hmm. Then he won another one like 27, 28 in Greece for Panathinaikos and he was the EuroLeague uh, Final Four MVP. Mm -hmm. And then he has like, I don't know, silver, Olympic silver in 1996, uh, two European championships and one World Cup championship. So like he's very like, decorated yeah. player and like he's loved over there yeah and uh so yeah that's it. he has a tattoo of uh of silver surfer the marvel character on his shoulder and it's like <laughs> really old and it's like does it look bad yeah it's like not the greatest <laughs> but you can see you can see it's like silver surfer you know and yeah. so that, that was his nickname because he was really athletic too mm -hmm. and so everyone was like oh silver surfer he can jump so high he can like yeah. fly and soar and whatnot but yeah, that's about my dad, you know, and just growing up watching him play. Kind of came over to the Pistons too, though. Yeah, Pistons, and then he had like one or two games with like the Atlanta Hawks, and then he moved to, and then we all moved to LA where he played for the Clippers. And now a message from our friends at Vibrant, whose 15 month certificate of deposit now pays 3% APY. Okay, explain it to me like I'm not a finance major. <laughs> A 15-month certificate of deposit is like a savings account you agree not to touch for 15 months. Okay, now explain it to me like I'm six years old. You have $1,000 and you give it to Vibrant instead of spending it. 15 months later, they give you back $1,000 plus some more money as a thank you gift. Okay, now explain it to me like I'm a Mets fan. <laughs> 15 months from now is like your own personal Bobby Bonilla day. Open a 15-month CD now as vibrantcreditunion.org slash Sirius Green. All one word. Being an athlete means pushing your body to its limits. At the ReCenter, Coralville's all-new Holistic Wellness Center, you can get back in the game much quicker. The ReCenter offers a wide array of athletic recovery treatments such as IV therapy, mild hyperbaric chamber, oxygen therapy, infrared sauna, and Normatec compression therapy. So whether you have a big game or marathon you're training for, or you're recovering from a tough workout, come to the ReCenter to get rehydrated, refreshed, and recovered much quicker. Call 319-694-6086 to schedule an appointment. Student discounts are available. So in your experience at the baseball game, Oh, yeah. You, I, I'm very surprised you remember that. Yeah, I only went to like one baseball game in my life, and I just remember I was like, third grade and i just downed like four or five hot dogs <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i, I was like the, the game is not what i'm interested in right now the, the, the kidney hot dog. Dog. The hot dog. The hot dog. So i was like yeah this, this is where it's at the hot dogs not the game <laughs> but yeah i'm very surprised you remember that was his 1996 silver was it for serbia or yugoslavia well at the time it was called yugoslavia but it was only serbia kept the name 
until like 2000 and something, yeah. like the early 2000s. So Ser- it was just Serbia and Montenegro, and we yeah. called ourselves Yugoslavia until like a little later. So yeah. it was just the, our two countries. Um, but where was I going? Oh, I think with like Serbia, the coaches. Serbian coaches. Serbian coaches, yeah. yeah. So I already had questions about this. Like, you know, your dad, like your guys' dad, you know, he's, he like shouts a lot. You know, people think he's a hothead, this and that. I'm honestly, I'm like, this is great. Like, if <laughs> he's he shouts, normal. yeah, if he shouts at me, I'm like, that's fine. Like, I'm fine with being yelled at. Once they start throwing clipboards, <laughs> keys, uh, markers at you, then you're doing something. Yeah. Wrong. But not just in general, no, at you, at you. Oh yeah, I, I, I've had like kids get hit with like a marker in like their head while they're like in the huddle and we're like well, what is going on and we're like not old there was like we're like 12 to 14 yeah. <laughs> like this guy is losing his mind losing his hair over <laughs> over us playing like when we're like 12 to 14 years old it couldn't have been that bad <laughs> like, just... I, exactly i remember there was one time uh sunday game we played like two leagues to play the league my league and a, a league older uh same coach same team uh we have like a game saturday and then a game sunday Sunday game, we're tired. It's like a game at like 11 a.m. I don't really want to play, whatnot. <laughs> I remember uh, they like, we were on defense, someone shot the ball, whatever. I grabbed the rebound, but I didn't box out. You know, I was just being like, like but I still grabbed it. I threw the, uh, threw the ball, and I, rem- running, I was running on offense, and I remember my coach was like, Rebracha! <laughs> and he breaks the, the clipboard off of his knee. Yeah. <laughs> shatters into like a thousand pieces. How and old I'm were like, you? Uh, 15. <laughs> 15 years old. I, just, I like, I grab the rebound so we don't, I, I don't mess up. And he breaks the clipboard. And then after the game, he was like, you better buy me a new clipboard. I was like, you broke it. Yes. Like, I broke it because of you. So I had to come back. <laughs> I came back like two days later That's with awesome. a new clipboard. And I'm like, here you go, man. <laughs> like, I won't do it again. <laughs> I broke it because of you. <laughs> I broke it because of you. But no, yeah. So Serbian coaches are, are crazy. They're all hotheads. I know, like, everyone that turns pro from the U.S. and they go to uh, Europe, they always tell me, like, oh, if you have a Serbian coach, you just get, like, Buckle up, be ready. Like, cause some guys can't really, they, they can't take it. Like, yeah. they don't. It's it's literally almost a form of a, of, a, of abuse. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I had my fair share with that, but I'm so glad that I'm here now. And so when <laughs> I'm being coached by your dad, I'm like, this is smooth sailing. <laughs> what's like, what's like the training like then? Like before, like when you're growing up, like the academies or like how does that how does that work? And are the are the trainers crazy too? Is it just all the time the same people throwing things at you? Uh, I wouldn't say that, like, no, the trainers, like, are different. Um, usually you just train with your coaches. Okay. So they put you out through things. But then there's a lot of different philosophies in Serbia. Like, some like to keep it simple. Like, hey, just jump shots, pull-ups, you know, between. And then there's some crazy people that, are, hey, you got to juggle two ball, tennis balls in the air while you dribble and stuff like that. You know, they just, like, make up stuff. Yeah. So I feel like there's a, vi- a wide variety of things, like, they kind of do in the United States. Mm-hmm. But I would say the main difference between training, uh, like, here and uh, in Serbia is just more team-wise. Like, they... Everything in Europe is skills. Everything, yeah, right? everything is skills, and it's more teamwork-based than, yeah. you know getting yours and whatnot yeah and that that can be beneficial when it comes to playing like of course playing team basketball duh you know but then also i feel like uh kids over there have uh they don't have that killer instinct that some kids here might have and i think that is one thing that is really missing from serbian basketball and i see it in my little brother at times Mm -hmm. because i remember we were playing um this past summer i went to his like my my dad has an academy and i went with them and they're all like 15 16 year olds and i was just like working out with them and they're, they're like hey do you want to play one-on-one i was like all right let's do this or whatever. Yeah. and every time <laughs> make I me feel good <laughs> yeah <laughs> every time i would score they'd like give me a high five like good shot or something i'm like you're like no no stop like, why are you doing this like, yeah, yeah you, can, you don't do this have that killer mentality be like mad yeah. that hey you got scored on you got to be better than this you know and and so I feel like that's the main difference between Serbian mentality and here. It's like over there, it's just everything is about team, being a good player, being a good person and whatnot. Yeah. 
Well, I feel like if we meshed, we'd probably be like a perfect, oh, a perfect, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that'd perfect. Be amazing. We'd get Jokic. Like the perfect balance. <laughs> Thank you, Jokic. The perfect balance. You tweeted that today. It was the. Oh it was yeah. Like, don't don't let Philip Robracha see this. Yeah. I want to talk about that though. I was gonna bring that up. The Yugoslavian let's national. Talk, uh, that that would be insane. It. Yeah. That I mean, bro, that team is different. That is. It was, and look, I'm sure that list left off some like guys that like probably could make it over mm-hmm. some like like Euroleague MVPs, yeah. like guys that probably would. Make the team over yeah. some of those American guys. Yeah, I think. I mean, there's. Let's talk. Who was say who the team was first of all? Like uh, the, the, I'll pull it up. I'll the pull point it up. of it. It was. Uh, it was the Yugoslavia. If it hadn't ever. Ha- if it hadn't bro- broken up. Yeah. If yeah. it stayed together. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. Luka Doncic, Bogdan Bog- uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic, Boyan Bogdanovic, who was the. Yeah. Here I got it right here. He's got it. Vucevic, Jokic. Yeah, called, so that's yeah. the starting Vuc, five. So Doncic, Bogdanovic, the both Bogdanovic's who are from different countries. Vucevic, Jokic, six man, Dragic, uh, Hazonia, Seti Osman, uh, Seti. B- Belincia, is that how you say it? Uh, what is it? Guy plays for the Warriors. Bielitsa. Oh, Bielitsa. Yeah. Bielitsa. Saric, Dragon Bender, Miritic, uh, who is still not, Miritic is not in the NBA. I think he's the only one on this who's not currently in the he NBA. He was, though. Bender. He was. He was. He was. Dragon Bender. Bender. Is he's he not, not? He's not in the NBA anymore. Oh, I was thinking of Saric. I, I got them confused. Bender. Dario Saric. Yeah, I was thinking, I got him and Saric confused. Yeah. But, uh, and then Majanovic, Nurkic, and Zubac. Yeah. That's I mean, a squad. Bro, Nurk was like the last guy on that list. Nurk's a problem. He is. Nurk's an issue now. And I think I tweeted about it. I was like, like this team would be amazing offensively, but I feel, our defense would be lacking. I feel yeah, like their the guard play struggle. their guard play isn't great no. outside of Doncic and both Bogdanovichs are pretty good. No, the bro, their Bogdanoviches are tough. They're, they're yeah, like tough. They're both snipers. of them. Like, Yes. And Seti Osman is nice, but like Hazonia is sketchy. I would say the bench is where it takes a, de- a deep hit, yeah. but like those five. But like, the front court on the bench, though, is still really good with Saric, yeah. Nurkic. Yeah, but like, bro, if you get, like, Let's if you have a team with Luka, both Bogdanoviches, you Jokic, don't need to go to the bench. and, and yeah. Vooch, like. No. They're, they're get so that five and go against our five. Like, let's play. And I think it's it's, like, gonna, be really it's gonna be. They're probably gonna beat us most of the time, just because of the different style. It depends on what style Maybe. of basketball you're playing. But that's like. But Bringing it back to my dad, I remember when my dad talked about playing in the 1996 Olympics versus the second dream team. That was like Reggie Miller, Shaq, David Robinson, Charles Barkley. They didn't have MJ, but... Uh, and he was telling me that they could keep up with them until, like, the third quarter. And then they and just they, got tired. They, uh, yeah, and yeah. they said, like, they were just better in that department, that they yeah. can just go longer, harder, and faster mm-hmm. for an extended period of time. And the, so that's why I feel like, you know, I, I don't know what it is about Team USA, but they are just, I don't feel like they're always in the best shape in any tournament they go to. Yeah. Was your so, dad too young to play in 92? Uh, no, I, I think or so. Yeah, too I, think young. I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He I don't probably, know how old he is. I don't even remember his stories, but he probably just didn't get picked. I mean, they had like Divac, who was started in his prime at that time. So. Wait, cool coach. Where was he from? He's from Croatia, but he played for Yugoslavia. Because yeah. yeah. I remember they had that huge uh, the feature on him yeah. in the last dance. Those teams yeah. were nice. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really these teams were. are nice. Really and all were. the all the like like MJ and Scottie Pippen were like, we've got cool coach because Jerry Krause like cool coach, so they oh, wanted yeah, to just yeah. stick it to cool coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and prove that he wasn't anything. I remember that. Yeah, that was, that was a good uh, good episode. No, these teams are these teams are big time though. So your dad has an academy now. So like, what's that? What's that like? Do you you go to school there? Like everything you just work out there? Is it like you go there after school or like how does that how does well, that work? Well, it's called an academy, but it's not really like going to school. The reason he calls it an academy, not a team, because every team in Serbia is kind of like club basketball. Mm-hmm. You choose a place where you play. You don't play for your school or whatnot. You just choose a club. But the difference is, he wants to teach these kids things that he thought was essential for young guys and girls uh, to know what they need growing up. So every, I don't know, week or two, they would bring in uh, a different person to talk to these kids. So they would like bring in police officer from Serbia and be like, hey, how do you handle a situation if you run into the police? Uh, they'd bring in a nutritionist. They'd bring in a uh, uh, physical therapist to talk about, like, stretching, what do you need to do, and whatnot. So it's not just about uh, the basketball side. So that's why he called it an academy, even though there's no real school in it. So okay. they're just teaching them life lessons that they might need even outside of basketball. That makes sense, then. How so, many... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. How many, like, academies are in Serbia? 
Like 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 this one, like what you, like what we're doing, or, or, or like, like the club, the club. I mean, oh, I mean, there's a lot of clubs. So like, it's like it's like a hard choice, like when you're picking your club, oh, yeah. like to pick. Yeah, because I didn't know like if like because obviously across Europe there's gonna be a lot of clubs, mm-hmm. but I didn't know like if there was like okay, like there's one or two in Serbia, um, no, so that like you pick that. Yeah. There is a lot for and th- these clubs will even like fight. Like oh, they recruit you. They fact, recruit yeah. you, and they like you'd sign contracts. Yeah, like you'd be a fourteen-year-old, and you'd have a monthly salary of like two hundred dollars. Yeah, which is nothing. Like, but they still like sign these kids because if they become good enough, and for example, a bigger club like Partizan or Red Star want them, they'd have to buy out their contract. So imagine how crazy that is. You're like a fourteen-year-old kid, and you have to get like bought out now. And sometimes these guys make the buyout like an insane amount and then the, you're just messed up because you have to stay with them. Right. You signed a contract and you don't know what that is. But like a lot of kids do that because, you know, Serbia, it's not the most developed. A lot of families might struggle. Uh, and so 200 extra dollars for them, it means a lot, especially coming from a 14-year-old kid. That, I mean, yeah. the, the average pay in Serbia per month is, uh, I want to say like 500 euros Translate to it's five hundred fifty dollars. Oh, currently it's five hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, but imagine living off that out like every month. So right. it's not a lot. So you know everything they they can get. You know it traps some kids in a way. Yeah. But they got to do it. Can you play for the club and like not sign the contract, or is that not yeah. an option? You, you can. can do that. Because yeah. I was gonna say, because like, how do those kids then go like to like play? For like Arizona gets like a ton of foreign for kids. Example, I I didn't do that. They offered yeah. me a and contract you. when I was fifteen, and I was like, I mean, I don't I don't need. They offered me like four hundred dollars per month. I was like, I don't need. I don't need that. I'm well off with my family, and you know, I was. You'd rather go to college. Yeah, I'd, ra- yeah, I'd rather use that on, not lose my eligibility and go to college. Yeah. So my situation, a little, but I was fortunate enough to have a family that that could provide for me. Yeah. Not everyone that is fortunate enough over there. Right. So like somebody like Jokic, then like how does that work for him? Like he, you know, I think he went pro uh, when he was like 16 as well. He, mm-hmm. he signed for Mega Vizura, which was like the third biggest team in Serbia at that time. And like yeah, my dad did the same thing. He moved. They moved out of town when they were both 16 year olds, and they go to like to a special school, which means it's kind of like uh, the hours are different. They go to like night classes, so that your school starts at like two and then ends at like eight or something mm-hmm. like that. And so a lot of good kids move towns and live by themselves in apartments with other basketball players and and yeah they go to like this special school built for them yeah well that's really interesting but so like you for example like for the people who don't know you came over and you went to prep school Mm -hmm. and do you go to high school first yeah i did my senior year in denver colorado yeah with george yeah (laughs) (laughs) shout Shout out george shout Shout out george George. we gotta send this episode to george he'll love it um but yeah, so you did that, and then you and you were prep school. Like, so was that kind of always the plan for you then to come to come to America and play like from Serbia when you decided not to take that contract? It it, it definitely was. You know, I was thinking more. Um, my dad told me that in basketball you need a lot of lot of luck, and he's right. Yeah, and he's he has right. his own story about it where he was when he was in Partizan when he just won the Euroleague, he wanted to move to. Benetton Treviso, where I was born, um, and like his bio was insane. And at the time, if you guys don't know, Benetton is a big fashion brand, and they had their own club. And uh, it's owned by like I think three brothers and one sister, and they're all billionaires. Mm. And one of the guys owns the basketball team, and he was talking, and he's like, he wasn't the richest out of them or whatever, and he was like, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna take this guy. And he was actually sitting on a yacht with his other brother, the <laughs> oldest guy. And he was reading in the newspapers like about my dad. He was like, hmm, is this Jelko Rebracha guy pretty good? He was like, yeah, he's good, but I don't want to pay that much. And he was like, all right, I'll pay for him. <laughs> so Just imagine that luck. The, yeah, that's so let him lucky. on a newspaper on a yacht somewhere in Italy. And that's how my dad got a chance to leave Serbia and have an opportunity to play basketball. So yeah. that's why I was all, I, when I heard that story, I was like, you know, I want to get a college education because you don't ever know what's going to happen. So, yeah. you know, I, this way I feel like I have a shot to get a degree and a shot to play pro basketball on stage right. in my life. Right. How yeah. can you be sitting on a yacht and be like, hey, I don't want to pay for this guy's buyout? You're like, dude, you're sitting on a yacht. <laughs> I mean, but I guess it was it probably insane. was still a lot. It was probably oh, a lot. I'm sure right. it was. But this but guy was just like, yeah, like, I like this guy. Let's, I'll, I'll pay for him. <laughs> like, I'm, re- I'm reading about it. <laughs> That's fine. 
What was uh needs a silver surfer? What, they needed him. <laughs> needed him back. What was the biggest? What was the biggest tri- like difference for you? Like when you came from Serbia and like started playing, like what was like the one thing that stood out in terms of like basketball, basketball? but then also like life, like something you had to adapt to. Uh, basketball was probably just the speed, speed yeah. of the game, and like how skilled everyone was. You know, I feel like we talked about like maybe the team stuff is not the best, especially at younger ages, maybe mm-hmm. like high school, but like. Yeah how skilled everyone was. Right. Uh, and then in life, it was probably just socially like friends and stuff. In Serbia, you have a close knit group of mm-hmm. maybe like three people and like you only stick to them. You have some other acquaintances that you might say what's up to, but you don't really veer off in your circle. For, for example, here we have all plenty of friends that you can talk to, socialize with, go out with, yeah. you know, grab a drink. So, I'd say that's the biggest thing. How over, over there, everyone was kind of closed off and yeah. not as open as they are over here. Yeah. Were you? Were you? How good was your English before you came here? Oh, it was it was really good. I kind of learned Serbian and English at the same time because okay. I moved he, uh, to the states uh, when I was like three. So I learned English and Serbian at the same time. And growing up, neither my English was the best. Like, wasn't really good. And then my Serbian was also wasn't really good either. So I always felt like a foreigner whatever country I went to. <laughs> so when I go back to Serbia, they'd be like, ah, oh, look at you American. When I go over here, everyone's like, ah, oh, you Serbian. <laughs> so I, I, felt, I felt left out every, everywhere I went. Yeah. All right. Really quick, we're going to take a we're gonna take a quick break. Mm-hmm. A night out at El Rey's is a great time because you got the live music in the front, which is usually like some country vibes, you know, a little bit, and then but you can go to the back and then it's like a nightclub type atmosphere. So like you get you get the best of both worlds from from both sides. And bartenders take care of you. It's a good spot. We we know some bouncers there. Great dudes. Yeah. Shout out Loudon. Um, and the owner is also a, a, a phenomenal guy. So based on the lines, you would think that yeah. the music is unbelievable, which which it is. So I highly suggest that everybody goes to El Race. It's packed all the time. Hey Connor, remember when we went to the Kimball Beecher family dentistry? I do. It was a it was a great spot. They got us out. They got us in and out quick. Very thorough teeth cleaning, and they told me my teeth were amazing. So they are good at lying as well. But well, I would hope that I would hope not. Well, normally at the dentist, like you don't get in and out very quick, and like they like got us right in, took care of everything. Every the nurses were great. The the dentist was great that we saw. Um, you know, we, they have locations, multiple locations, and they, they take care of you. So we have to shout out the Kimball Beecher Family Dentistry. Mr. Um, Beecher is the man. He brought us, like, yeah, no, he's he's the GOAT. You're, we are back, episode 27, with my good friend Philly Cheese, Mr. Rabracha. So, prep school in in, wasn't in was it in Denver? No, Massachusetts. No. Ma- yeah. Oh yeah, Massachusetts in the Nepsack. Mm-hmm. Kind of talk about that experience and kind of what that was like, and then like kind of your recruitment through that prep school thing. Because I feel like people in Iowa don't really understand the prep school option. I think mm-hmm. they probably have a better idea of it now because of the Murrays. Yeah. But mm-hmm. before, I don't think they really understood like why people would do that. But you took that option and it paid off for you. So kind of get into that a little bit. Uh yeah, coming out of high school, my senior year in Denver, Colorado, I. L- I think I had like one JUCO offer and I'm like, I'm not going JUCO. And I decided to go to a prep school where you do what's called the postgraduate year. You get an extra year of high school and you're like a senior, a super senior. And uh, I went to Massachusetts. Williston Northampton was uh, the place, but it was a little different than the Murray's because the Murray's I think was primarily just a basketball thing. It was, it was like, like they didn't go to school. They didn't go to school. They didn't go to school. Yeah, from my, from my experience is like you go to school and classes and take – courses and whatnot um but it was it was good i've met a lot of good people you know i have another year to pre- prepare skills wise body wise so i think you know it's it's undervalued um at times and after that year uh i only got one offer and it was north dakota and i was like well it's division one it's better than better than what i didn't have and i remember they sent me like the the scholarship to sign and it was sitting on the table and they're like, yeah, 
like let us know if you want to do this and i like signed the paper but i just didn't let them know until like three days later <laughs> so i was like i don't want to sound too desperate like this yeah. is my only offer <laughs> <laughs> like but, like you're like oh well i'll weigh my yeah, options <laughs> you, I, I have no options apart from that you turn around uh, Serbia or or go to north dakota <laughs> <laughs> uh but no my my experience in north dakota three years was really amazing i met some great people lifetime Tez. Yeah, Cortez yeah. Seals are the the Seals brothers. I met them over there. Wub, Tavy. Yeah, them too. Um, you, had a, you guys yeah. had you, you had one good team there, right? Like out of your three, like pretty yeah, solid. Uh, the last my, year you weren't as good, but no. My sophomore year is uh, we had Marlon Stewart on the team and a bunch of other guys that really contributed, and we made it to the championship game in the Summit League. Our yeah. record was bad, but like we didn't really get all playing like didn't start playing well until the tournament mm -hmm. and then we just got blown out by like North Dakota State so that was that was that was depressing uh, <laughs> <laughs> to put it lightly uh, and then stuck it out one more year uh, where I felt like I had my best personal year but yeah. you know it was it was tough with losing so many senior guys and and leaders and scores um, and that's when you decided to go in the transfer portal well I went to the transfer program for two different reasons. One's a, one is I wanted to challenge myself. You know, yeah. I wanted to go somewhere bigger. I wanted to be on the big stage and yeah. prove myself. But then also, North Dakota didn't offer my uh, didn't offer a master's degree that is f uh, in person. It was fully online. And as a foreigner at that time, it was like during COVID, you have to take uh, in person classes. And I was like, you know, I can't take the master's degree, the master's that I want. And, you know, I want to challenge myself. So it was naturally, I was like, I graduated. I want to I want to yeah. weigh my options and see where I can go. Yeah. Um, so a lot of teams hit me up. But the reason why Iowa kind of like stood out, I think we talked about this the other night at the event we had at mm -hmm. your guys' house. Uh, just kind of the vi family vibe. You know, my, f my family, most of my family is 5,000 miles away. You know, I don't get to see them. I haven't seen them consistently since 2017 when that was the last time I lived in Serbia. So that's what kind of Coach McCaffrey talked about, just, you know, how close and tight-knit we are. And that's what I really felt over the past year. And mm -hmm. that's why Iowa stood, you know, we can talk about X's and O's and this and that and styles, but yeah. that's that's the one thing that really drew me in. Yeah. Oh, and now you sure. live in the house with us. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> what's that like? Like, what? what what's literally the house the like? House. How do you enjoy that so far? Which I enjoy the house. I, I really enjoy the house. Uh, you know, don't want to give away year, the address, but no, <laughs> no, 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 we can't do that. Last uh, last year, I lived with Luke, and Luke plays video games in his room or is in his room. 23 out of 24 <laughs> hours of the day <laughs> so uh the kid sleeps more than me uh, the, that uh, yeah i know that is crazy uh but at the house you know you like we're all in the living room we have a giant living room we're all there watching sports like we watched tennis last night we watched baseball curios. Get curios uh yeah, you're turning into a Phillies fan. Like I, like yeah. I don't know what I'm. I, I don't Phillies, know what I'm baby. doing. And then I turn on the TV and I'm like, the Phillies are. And I was like, all right, I guess yeah. I'll watch this. Yeah, <laughs> so, Phillies and hot I'm dogs. Turn, yeah, Mets turn. suck. <laughs> Jerry, you heard that? Rico, Mets suck. Yeah. So, dun, I'm, turning dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so I'm turning into a Phillies fan, and no, it's really cool just to you know have guys socialize with. I guess. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Even though I make a lot of funny jokes at you most uh, of the time. You, you do. You make a lot of Serbia <laughs> jokes that what I was it? always appreciate. But <laughs> <laughs> Back to the basketball side of things. I'm curious, like, you, because you came in fresh off, like, Luca. So, mm -hmm. like, and, you know, him being. Which can't be easy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, him being, like, who he was. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure, like, you know, he's, I mean, he's known, you know, kind of everywhere. Yeah. Um, like, what was, did that, like, mean anything to you? Like, I knew that you were. A little bit of a fan of his uh, as a player, at least not maybe not a fan, but like you, you watched his no, game. I admired his and, game. Yeah. yeah, I remember I watched his game. I forgot was it when you guys played like Western Illinois? Early in the like year, absolutely yeah. like smacked him. The year I think he had like I forty came. in the first yeah, half. Yeah, so yeah, I remember yeah. we were watching that in the locker room, and then I who would have known I would have been technically replacing the guy next year. Yeah. So that never, you know, came into my, I never thought about that. But it was definitely hard. You know, I knew I was never going to be Luca Garza. Um, 
I mean, I averaged 17 in the Summit League, and he averaged 20-something in the Big Ten. So that's <laughs> <laughs> that's that is a difference. Uh, um, but I try to fill the void that he kind of left. I mean, Keegan did have obviously a lot better job than I did. Uh, but uh, yeah, but I think you're both very like I think you're both obvi- like obviously he's very important, but like mm-hmm. you were important as well. And like oh. I think you. I don't think you give yourself enough credit on the year last year. Um, like, I think there were obviously better games and worse games, mm-hmm. just like I had, just had, like Patrick had, mm-hmm. just like Keegan had. Yep. Like everybody has those games. and But, like, I still thought, like, you played your role well. And mm-hmm. I think, like, there was definitely times where maybe certain people were, like, harder on you, mm-hmm. definitely, just like, you know, they're hard on hard on the rest of us. Yeah. But, uh, like, and I noticed, like, at times that, that kind of took a toll on you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, like, you've been – I think you were a lot better than you gave yourself credit for. And I also think that moving forward, I think you've had like a like a very, very, very good attitude about this upcoming year. If you don't like Philip Robracha, you're going to have to see me. <laughs> you're going to have That's to see fact. me. If That's you don't like Philip Robracha, you got to see me. That I'll, doesn't defend, mean, I'll defend Philip Robracha till my last that, day on that means Earth. Nothing. That means, but you got to see me too. Yeah. That's when you really worry. No, no, like, no, no, no. You, you have to worry about me. it with him. You got to see me. I will defend Philip Robracha till my last day on this Earth. You are gonna have to see me. <laughs> I'll stick somebody. <laughs> I'll stick somebody. You don't want to see? I got a left hook. This Pretty is, mean. This is the family vibes we were talking. About. Yeah. <laughs> this but, is. This but is, really, this you don't. You don't. You don't mess with our house. I can't say the address. I don't want nobody pulling up. But but I will if if you keep talking about Philip. I'll send you the address. Pull up. You have to see me. (laughs) In all seriousness, though, like that, I think that was like a, you know, like I said, like I don't think you gave yourself enough credit, um, but I know certain things were hard on you. So, like, what were some of like the biggest adjustments that that you made, and and how that all how that all worked for you? And then piggybacking off that, what are some like some of the biggest changes you're going to make going into Mm -hmm. going into this year? I feel like the reason why I was at times down last year and I didn't feel like myself was confidence Mm -hmm. and i did not know that confidence plays such a major role in any sport but but like for us basketball and i'd have one bad game where i would wouldn't have a good practice or this and that and then i'd get in my own head and think like oh i really can't shoot oh i really can't do this i can't do that and then once you believe that you you are that i guess yeah Um, yeah you manifest these negative thoughts um so i feel like that was my biggest thing that i did wrong last year and i think it was just because i was uncomfortable you know i thought switching places was going to be easy to me i feel like i'm traveled like half the globe in my in my lifetime and i thought that was going to be easy but i've been in north dakota for three years i had a support system around me you know coming here even though like everyone is great it's just new and i was i felt uncomfortable at times and i think that played also another role into why you know, I didn't have the season I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I realized that we were a really good team, and I just kind of bought into my role. I was like, hey, you got to play defense. you got to uh, rebound. Rebound. Rebound the glass. You know, you got to be physical. So whatever the team needs from me, I'm going to do. Even though, hey, you're not having the year you want, that doesn't matter. Like, I'm trying to win. And that was one of my thing, main, main things that I told Coach McCaffrey. I was like, when I was coming here, I was like, I want to win. And I remember, like, when we won the Big Ten tur- uh, tournament, like, we hugged it out, and he was like, this is why you came here. And I was like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I want to say, too, like, you never can play. Like, we've had guys who we can't say this about, but, like, you never can play not one time. Like, mm-hmm. you would play – like, there was games you played 25, 27 minutes, but then there might be a game where you played 14. Yeah. But I never, like, heard an ounce, like, never complain, never, like, a bad face, like, nothing. You would be mm-hmm. up and at them, and that's just, like – I mean that's a testament to the player you are, and it. But it's also like those are the the kind of things people don't understand. But like that's why we were good because yep. like if you, if all of a sudden you're a starting five man, and you're playing twenty five minutes. Okay, well next game you play twelve, you start bitching and everybody complaining. Like that's that's negative energy that yep. takes such a toll on a team, especially yep. throughout the season. Yep. Like that didn't happen with you, yep. and so like that's such like an integral like it's so it's why you were such an integral part of the team. And it's something that like like. As a competitor, as an athlete, like it's gonna eat at you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, there's games where I like wouldn't play as like, so, like it eats at you, mm-hmm. but you just, you can't show it, no. you can't show it, like because like obviously I know because like we've all been there, like yeah. like it, you want to be on the floor the whole game, 
and there's times you were, times you weren't. So it's mm-hmm. like that that, that 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 shit eats at you. Yeah. And like, but it's like as long, but you just gotta be strong enough and really tough it out, and, and yeah. don't show it. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I, I try to do it to the best of my ability. You know, just kind of not show that I was frustrated at times. Just buy into my role. You know, like hey, like you said, some days I played 25, some days I played 14 minutes, or whatever. Some days I got zero shots. Some days I got 10 shots in a game. You know. It, you, you, you just got to battle through it. And I feel like I did that to my best little bit. And we had, not just me, but we had plenty of guys that did that last yeah. year. And that's why I feel like we were very successful in the end. Yeah. And I think there's something that has to be said for like, like you can talk about numbers or whatever you want, but like we had some, we had like a legitimate national player of the year candidate. Like the num, like the other guy's numbers aren't like, nobody's numbers are going to be as good as if you're on like a, a different team, right? Mm-hmm. Where we, like we have Keegan who shoots, like who who shot a lot of shots per game as he should have right mm-hmm. he got picked fourth yeah average twenty three game like something needs to be set like I think me and Bo were second and third we both averaged like eleven if yeah. that like mm-hmm. ten and a half eleven so I it's like Chris was there up there Chris too. was around there too yeah so it's <laughs> like it doesn't really it, it's just kind of like okay like yeah like our numbers aren't going to be as good if you play with an All American same mm-hmm. thing that happened with Luca and Weezy like nobody else I don't even think averaged double digits on that team my sophomore year. I don't think so. Because like no. those, because like Luca averaged twenty something and Weezy averaged like sixteen. Like, there are only not that many more shots. points to go. There's not yeah. that many more shots to go exactly. around. Exactly. So it's like it's it, people. I don't think people really understand that. Mm-hmm. And it's like because it's like and then like you could take a guy who let's say they average like thirteen at some school and they transfer up and it's like okay like well he averaged thirteen but he shot thirty eight percent from the field and twenty seven from three and like and th- and they were below five hundred. Yeah. It's like well, I'm glad he averaged a, a fair amount of points, but like, does that make him a good? I don't know. So it's just like you always have to account for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and it's like you were efficient, you know, exactly. you, like you, yeah, just like just like Patrick said. Um, I wanted. I'm just curious. Like at any point last year, like did you did you call your dad? Like did you call like other coaches, like people, and like did they have any advice for you? Like you know how how did you ever deal with like a a little like this part of your career, like when you're struggling with confidence, like what was your, what was your like go-to, go-to activity if you're um, comfortable sharing? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of sleepless nights and I felt <laughs> like I had s- sleep problems <laughs> at times. Uh, it's not easy, you know, you're in the spotlight yeah. and everyone thinks it's great, but you have people on Twitter, you have people everywhere in your DMs talking this, talking that, you know, it's not always fun seeing, you don't, you, you don't want to see these, but you, Sometimes it does happen, you know, and it mm-hmm. eats away at you. Uh, but my go-to was just watching a lot of film by myself during these long nights and then just talking to my dad, you know. What was his advice he, for you? Well, it was just kind of battling through because he had the same situation, well, same, a very similar situation when he got bought, bought by the Italian billionaire uh, to go to his team. First year he was there, he was atrocious, he he said himself he was like so bad and and he he wasn't good and they thought about replacing him and and whatever and then next year he wins like the Italian Cup and was like I don't even know if he was the MVP of the Italian league and and this and that so like he just kept telling me you got to battle through it you got to practice you got to want it and that's what I kind of did I just put my head down I played my role I played hard and then when summertime came around. You know, it wasn't just working on my skills, but it was also working on my mental. That's why yeah. I, right. I, I think at two days after we lost in the tournament, <laughs> I went to the rec center and I played basketball. And I'm just shooting, just playing with random kids. I know they're, like, not up to par <laughs> like what we're used to, but it's just good to play and be free. And I've been doing that all summer long. We, mm-hmm. we go to court 45 with Tristan Spurlock, and we had some college guys there too. And, you know, just... That's how I got through it, and using his advice, just don't give up hope and just keep yeah. keep battling. Just keep hoping. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely, definitely. All right. What's like? Is, give me something like people should be expecting like this upcoming season from you. Just being more confident. I feel like my game will will show a lot better than last season uh, with my confidence because I know I have the ability to stretch the floor. I know I have a lot of moves in the post. I know I'm still gonna be the gritty guy that's going to be going after every dead ball. I mean, every loose ball, every rebound. So, you know, same from last year, but then a bigger offensive role, I feel like. Yeah. All right. No, yeah, because I remember. And a lockdown defender. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) I was on a podcast like two days ago with, shout out, Rafael and Trey, new coverage. But uh, Rafael made a point. He's like, I think 
he, 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 he was like, I think the X factor for you guys is, and in my brain, like, after, he, he, when he started with that question, he didn't say the name yet, but in my head, I'm like, I wonder who he's talking about. Like, I fig- I was like, is he going to say Tony? Is he going to say Chris? I, I don't know who he's going to say. And he goes, is Philip? And then I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, wow. Like, I didn't even think, about- I was like, you're absolutely right. Like, he's like, I think somebody, it, he didn't say X factor. He's like, somebody that I think like could make a huge impact for you guys is Philip. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> and then, and then I raved about Philip for like two and a half minutes. <laughs> but like, I appreciate that. <laughs> but, but I was like, I was like, yeah, I hadn't even thought about it like that, but it was just like, like, so I was like, okay, like I'm glad Philip is getting respect from people around because like, because he deserves it in my mind. And like, I think, I think that like there are people that are going to try to bring you down, but I do also think that there's a lot of people out there mm-hmm. that will also give you your flowers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I think you also have to take yeah. like the, like, cause that's something that I've had to learn too. Connor's had to learn that's like, okay, like, yeah, like there's people out there that are going to complain. They're going to whine. They're, they're mm-hmm. miserable no matter what mm-hmm. they're, 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 they're going to bitch about me and they're going to bitch about the next five to ten Iowa three men for the rest exactly. of their life yeah. like like however till they till they die they're gonna complain mm-hmm. so it's like just kind of one of those things where it's like you got to take it with a grain of salt and then also like the people are gonna give you your flowers too yeah. and that's something I've always respected about our fan base yeah I, I totally yeah. could have said it better give me give me in Serbian Iowa basketball is going to win the Big Ten and win the national championship give me uh, <laughs> Give me that right now for the pod. Iowa će da pobedi Big Ten <laughs> i imamo da osvijemo nacionalnu titulu. <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's tough. All oh right, now give me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have 10 double-doubles this season and I'm going to lock up every offensive player <laughs> and nobody can tell me shit. <laughs> <laughs> give me that, give me that. Uh, imat ću 10-10 double-double ove sezone i imam da stavim u džep svakog ofenzivnog igrača. <laughs> oh, the last one, oh, the last And nobody one. can tell me shit. I niko ne može da ništa da mi kaže. <laughs> That's tough. That's tough. That's so tough. We gotta clip that. All the Serbian. All the, All the Serbian, Serbian, Serbian fans. Yeah, we'll get some Serbian viewers. Hold well, on, there's one more thing that I wanted to cover before we kind of wrap up here. <laughs> the cursing at the refs in Serbian. <laughs> It's so funny because, like, I read something about how you do that, and mm-hmm. then, like, one of the first practices, Courtney made a call you didn't like, and you're over there like, I'm the <laughs> Is that is that Serbian, what that was right that, there? No, that, that wasn't, but, yeah, I mean... <laughs> like, I'm the tough. And the, yesterday you were pissed at Ben, and you're oh, like, yeah, I'm ben, the ben was, yesterday, Ben was... Ben and I got into got into it at practice. I thought <laughs> there was a few illegal screens set that I got clipped by, um... But no, yeah, sur- swearing in Serbian, I didn't know I could get, I couldn't get teed up by it. Um, I'm sure you can if you over exaggerate it and like really talk to the ref and like are yelling at him. But like, I just kind of like say it, but like he's over there and I'm just looking up here and saying all these swear words. Uh, but I learned that my first year at North Dakota when we had like a scrimmage and one of the, uh, like we had a meeting with all the refs after our scrimmage and they were like, yeah, you said something in Serbian, like, That's really smart. You you can say these things, and I can't tee you up because I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was I like, have an right, idea. But <laughs> exactly. He's like, I have an idea. It's not good. But, yeah. <laughs> but he was like, you're not directing it at me. You're you're saying it to somewhere else, and I don't know what it is. And he's like, you, you should probably use that to let off some steam and, and, and that stuff. And so I just kind of kept rolling with it. But then sometimes in the heat of the moment, I will say stuff in English where that I want them to hear it, <laughs> yeah. where I'm like – Say a swear word, cuss word, say something uh, about them that I'm you should have happy. gotten four or five technical fouls last year. Dude, oh, there was, was a couple games and for where some you'd reason, go like you just rogue. didn't, and I don't know why. You go rogue, I, and no, I'm like, dude, I, feel, like, I mean, like, like somebody grabbed Philip. <laughs> seriously, I mean, like, it, it wasn't too fun going against Kofi and having his shoulder or elbow plowed right in my nose. You know? <laughs> so I, I wasn't ha- too happy about those ca- uh, no calls. Uh, but yeah, I feel like that's just. Oh, I'm a hothead sometimes just yeah. growing up seeing my father in that competitive <laughs> spirit, you know. I love it. Kind of transfer it. I feel like yeah. we can all kind of associate with that. All right. Give me la- last question okay. real quick. We get like one minute. Give me we're, – we're stealing this from another pod. We're going to start doing like some quick hitters like at the end okay. um, just to get to know you better. Give me 
give me your go-to meal in Iowa City, and it can't be Estella's just because they're the sponsor. It can't be Estella's. Your go-to go-to. meal. I know it is. That's the go-to. It is because that is the go-to. I, love I know it's the, the loaded, go-to. The loaded yeah. burrito. Oh, Plug my the God. Loaded. Yep, the there loaded, you go. My favorite. I always get it. Uh, give me your go-to place to eat in Iowa City. Go to Dandelion. Dandelion. Good pick. Dandelion. Yeah. Good pick. The Lodger. Oh, my God. I found about yeah. it. Found out about it. It's amazing. Dandelion's unreal. Yeah. All right. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. <laughs> this one's tough. Yeah, it is. Uh, let's do Got to do Michael Jordan. Yep. Um, Solid, obviously. I want to do another basketball player, Drazen Petrovic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yep. Is he, yeah. Is he yeah. Serbian? No, he was Croatian, Croatian. but Yugoslavian. Yeah, Yugoslavian passed away. Yeah. I'm trying to think of three more. <laughs> this is going to be funny. Uh, Iggy Azalea. Because <laughs> <laughs> Connor and I. <laughs> That's comedy. <laughs> Kind of not like like it gives Ilya. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, two more, two more. Come on, pick someone good. Um, I don't know. Give me any dinner. It's a pretty insane dinner so far. This, is, yeah, this is an insane dinner. I gotta put in she- a chef in there. I love he get a chef up. Maybe like Gordon Ramsay. I feel like he'd be an interesting guy to sit with, talk with. Okay. This food sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This guy. Oh no. I don't know who the last person would be. Like, I mean, maybe a president of some kind, like, you know, the president of Serbia. I don't know. Dude, president of Yugoslavia. Well, not pre- Yeah, president of Yugoslavia. Josip Broz Tito. Uh, he was, like, the communist leader at the time, and he was, like, very loved before he passed away, and then the whole place went and to then, yeah. shit. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good way to end it. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, yeah, I was just curious on that. We're, we're going to start doing, like, some more quick hitters. We're running out of time today because he's got the stats tutor, but... <laughs> Hopefully, 50, 50. We, hopefully we covered enough. Um, yeah. Thank you for thank you for joining us. I feel like we feel like this was a really good episode. Thank we covered you, a lot of ground. Uh, yeah, I think the listeners are going to appreciate this one. Absolutely, yes, yeah. sir. Signing yeah. off. Thank yeah. you guys. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Appreciate Philly it. Philly cheese. Now from our friends at McDonald Optical. If Mr. McDonald is nearly as feisty as he was on the sidelines, watching eight through ten year old Jack and his son Nolan. That means if you go to his eye doctor or place, you got to be in pretty good. You got to be in good shape. He's going to take care of you. Yeah, he's going to take care. If you're having any issues with your optics, you got to go to McDonald Optical because he's definitely going to look after you. He's got the solution for whatever your problem might be. And, uh, no, great, great people over there, 100%. And take care of you. Yeah, without a doubt.